All right, so the next topic we want to cover is controllers. Now controllers, the sound might be a bit scary, but it's not. I guess it's just a function. So you can see here, this is the response. Okay, so response, it's, it's not a lot of code, but in a bigger application, um, once you start interacting with the database, apply some validations, uh, it, this can get quite long. All right, so what what you should be doing is just moving this bit, you know, see this uh, second argument, this is a callback function, and all this logic is happening inside this callback function. So what you want to do is move this to a separate file, separate folder, we're going to call that controllers. All right? So that way you, you are better organized, so you have the routes file, and each route will have the controller function sitting in a controllers folder. Okay, so that's the goal. So what you can do, you can cut your second argument to your route, which is a callback function. Cut, all right, and we're going to replace that with um, the name. We're going to give this to a function. For example, let's say, um, what do we do? Username. Yeah, just, just for testing purpose, we do that. Are you looking for online course that will teach you how to build full stack, back to front, React and Node.js applications from scratch? Hi, my name is Ryan. I have over 30 full stack courses published in Udemy. Most of these courses are based in real world examples. So today, I want to tell you just one thing. If you have basic understanding of JavaScript, don't wait anymore. Start building real world projects with me and take your coding skill to a whole new level. I will teach you the core fundamentals of React, Node and modern JavaScript so that you can start building full stack JavaScript apps in no time. All my courses are suitable for beginner to pro level users. Each line of code is explained, each question is answered and the source code is provided for all lectures. Click the 90% discount links down below to start this awesome journey with me. And then we have to now import this callback function from the controllers file, right? So const, uh, we can destructure username from. So we're going to create that folder in one step up. Controllers, we can call that auth. .js extension is important. So it's not const, it's import. And it should be on top. Um, I'm afraid whatever I copied here, cut here, I need to um, put in the file first. Let me create a new folder, controllers, and then here we have to create a new file called auth.js and let's export const username. So that's the name we gave, right? So paste here, paste that code that you copied from there. All right. So all you did is move that callback function to this file and then put it as this function name, username. That's all we did. Okay. And now since we are exporting it, we, we were able to import here. Okay. Now let's make sure we put it on top. So we import from controller and we use that here. All right. So it's just a code organization. So before we had all that code here. So all this code, all this code was here, but now we just move that to this file and we import from there. Okay, simple as that. Now, again, it should work. It's the same thing, nothing has changed. We just organized our code. Now we have our um, Express API with you know, better organized code. So we got route file, we got controllers file. Each request will come here and that will be handled in our controllers. Okay, and each route will be imported and applied as a middleware here in the server.js. Now, I want you to do some homework. I want you to create one more route. Uh, it can be anything. For example, let's say users, okay? So create one, another route called get route called users and you send array of usernames. Okay, for that you can use your controller function here. All right, so pause this video and try to do that on your own. 
and I will be right back. All right, so hope you guys um, paused the video and did it yourself. If not, that's right, you can do it do with me together. So let's create the users endpoint, right? So router.get users and controller function, you can give any name. I just like to use the same name, users. And then import that from here, users. And then go to the control and write that export const users equals to again request response we have access to that and then here you can send response json and i ask you to send the array of username so you can send for example let's say ryan david jen i say something like that all right now we got one more endpoint slash users don't forget slash or oh, i'm gonna type it as well router all right so users endpoint will be returning the usernames all right let's try let's try users and you see we got the array of usernames beautiful all right so this was a homework hope you did it congratulations now all this we don't actually need these are just for learning purpose okay so leave them for now later we're going to remove but at the moment leave it so our next task would be to connect to mongodb all right so you can use mongo atlas for that or you can use local installation so if you have the mongodb installed in your computer locally you can easily connect i will show you how you can do that Otherwise, you can use Mongo Atlas. I guess go to Mongo Atlas, sign up, and then go through the process, and that will give you a connection string, something, uh, some string. You need that to start using MongoDB in the cloud. And if you need the uh, tutorial for that, you can go to colorado.com and search mongodb you get this blog how to use mongodb atlas all right so here you get the detailed instruction so go to mong atlas sign up you know enter your details sign up choose the default options give your cluster a name and then create yeah it takes a while and then you go to the network access our access from everywhere okay so database access you create a database username and password and you're going to put that database username and password in your connection string which you get by clicking here and then when you get that connection string you will replace your name username and then the password which you created here of the new user when you created this new user for the database so that username and password you will put in your connection string replacing that and then use that connection string to connect with mongodb all right so that's how you can use mongo atlas or if you have local insert that's fine if not you can always search how to install mongodb on mac or windows and just go from there all right so we're done with routes controllers this folder organization next we're going to um, connect our application with mongodb